In the recent iOS 15 update, Apple gave us some clues as to what we might expect in the classical music app. For all classical musicians, this is super exciting and for all classical music lovers. But in today's video, I want to share with you three things that I really would like to see in this new classical music app that is rumored to be featured in the fall of 2022. To keep you up with the news, Apple recently acquired a classical music streaming service called Primephonic. I made a video about this fall of last year, so I'm not going to get into the specific details, but if you want to learn more, I'm going to leave a video card right up here so that way you can take a look at that video. There were many things that Primephonic did well, which is why Apple acquired the classical music streaming service. And in today's video, I'm just going to share three things that I want to see in this new classical music app by Apple. First, I want to see high quality 44.1 kilohertz lossless audio in this app. For many, many years, Apple has been an incredible hardware company, making amazing laptops, amazing computers, making amazing headphones. You know, we're grateful to have the AirPods Pro and the AirPods Max. And what these two headphones offer that not many other companies offer is spatial audio. And spatial audio is a really important thing when you're listening to classical music because what you have is depth. You're able to hear different instruments in their correct places. So it's not like a two-dimensional sound that you're listening for. With this spatial audio technology that Apple has developed, I think there's a real potential with really capturing the amazing sound of high lossless audio. Because for me, when I'm sitting in a concert hall, what I really want is the sound to bounce off the, off the walls, depending on what kind of orchestra hall it is. And for me, I would really like to see that in the app. And this was lacking for such a long time when we're listening to classical music, because usually classical music, you get the most raw audio, you get the most raw experience when you're in a concert hall. What's difficult about listening to classical music in general is that you can't listen to it in like everyday settings. Like you can't, I mean, you can listen to classical music in the car on the way, but if you're listening to orchestral music that has very um, nuanced colors and nuanced sounds, you are not going to get the best audio if you're going to be listening in a car unless you are driving like a Maybach that has like 16 bajillion speakers in them. Not everyone has the access to that kind of technology and to that many speakers, to be quite honest with you. Which is why Apple saw an opportunity here. They saw that they have the hardware, they have the AirPods Max and the AirPods Pro with the spatial audio, and they could absolutely include the 44.1 kilohertz sound, which is what's demanded off of high quality audio. Orchestras around the world spend millions of dollars just to put the correct mic in the correct place. And I feel like this will finally do justice in trying to capture that amazing sound for the listener. The second thing I want to see in the Apple classical music app that's rumored in the fall is easy composer search and metadata. This is by far the most important reason why Apple has acquired Primephonic because right now Apple music does not do a really good job in the, the labels of the artists, the specific artists, and the specific concert halls like Apple's now rival Adagio, which is based in Europe, is another classical music streaming service. They go as far as to what kind of hall the instrumentalist has played in, which is a very specific detail because the same music might sound different in different concert halls around the world. So I feel like that's a very important distinction that us classical music nerds would love to see. Not to mention, it'll be very easy for Apple to piggyback on the success of Primephonic because Primephonic had a very intuitive user interface. So they can just pretty much use the coding and use the app from Primephonic and use it in Apple Classical. And I'm curious to see how the app is going to turn out. Leave your comments down below. What do you want to see in the Apple Classical Music app in terms of the user interface? I wanna get this conversation going. The next feature I want to see in the Apple Classical Music app is the ability to live stream classical music concerts. Now this is a big one, it might be a stretch, but I think this is for me an important way to engage with audiences. If there's something that we've learned through the pandemic for the last two and a half years, I feel like everybody is now digital. Everybody now has their own live stream service. Now with this Apple Classical app, it'll just make things more mainstream. I'll be curious to see how Apple Classical partners with orchestras if they decide to go that route. I think it'd be a great opportunity for new orchestras to get into this service so that audiences can listen to a variety of different music. Apple can easily do this. For instance, Adagio has different subscription tiers. If you wanna listen to classical music with ads, 
you know, you're more than welcome to similar to what Spotify does. And then when you have like another subscription tier, like $9.99, then you have access to lossless audio. You have no ads. You have a lot larger library of different music that you can have access to. And then there's like a specific subscription. It's a little bit more expensive in Adagio and you can get it for like $30 a month if you don't pay annually, you can pay it monthly. And I'm curious if Apple can work something out like that. Like, I wonder if there's a way for classical orchestras to like pay a subscription fee to have their live streams available on Apple Classical, which I'm sure Adagio has some kind of deal like behind the scenes with different orchestras around the world. This gives orchestras another way to reach audiences globally. If you wanna learn more about the recent findings in the iOS 15 update about the Classical app, I'm gonna leave a video right over here so that you can learn more about that. And I'm also gonna leave some violin tutorials for anyone who's a violinist on this channel. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.